Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Breath of Fiction. As always, my name is Radicor, otherwise known as Shows Desserts, and today I am joined by... This is Sparta78979. That's Nick, aka number one god Jima bro. And Dan, also known as DCC Rules. Alright, that's good. We didn't have that big of a pause this time in the intro, so we're on track for <laughs> something. Thanks for Sarda right. for the save. Because DTC always likes to not do that. But anyways, what are we doing today, speaking of which? So today... It's time... Oh, sorry. Oops. <laughs> today we're going to be continuing continuing the card games with Moose on AU, the Yu-Gi-Oh! AU. So Yu-Gi-Oh! Part I, 2. Let's go. So for a quick breakdown, uh, before we get into any of it, I thought I had lost the docs, the docs uh, document for us. I was panicking for the last, like, two weeks. But thankfully, I found it, and I was able to finish the Duelist Kingdom arc. I may go and go a bit into Battle City as well. I'm not sure. It all depends on how complicated the battle, the uh, the rest of the Duelist Kingdom arc gets. So where we left off is that is that is that Rengoku had, had just been killed at the end at the end of his duel of his duel with Akaza. So yeah, so he doesn't get a break in any AU, especially not in this AU, I guess. Sorry, Rengoku. No, and so man. after Rengoku can't catch a break in anyone's AU, can they? Man, he doesn't even catch a break and forget about it. Uh, I mean, Gatoge literally just said, literally Gatoge. If Gatoge could say something to Rengoku, it's literally, if your purpose in this manga isn't to do anything but die for someone else's sake of development, but it's okay. That's because people will stand you anyway in the fandom, so it's all right. Indeed. So, this, despite Rengoku's death, the team, which is which is Tanjiro, Inosuke, Zenitsu, and Kanao, and Aoi, and Nezuko, along with the rest, the rest of the Hashira, keep going anyway. After several other duels, other Tanjiro du- duels another moves on operative after he killed another duelist by strangling him after a duel, after a duel. Oh my God! <laughs> so what happened was this operative had 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 originally dueled Canal and held her hostage after she had lost. And dur and during this duel, uh, the, uh, the dark dark Tanjiro, which is all referred to other Tanjiro as now, so dark Tanjiro was forced to wear a noose around his neck for the entirety of the duel. And whenever he pissed off his other duelist, he 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 would get choked as a result. Throughout the entirety of the duel. Disclaimer, just for those of you who are concerned, the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, not the anime which we're basing this on, is quite dark because it's a we- it's, because one, it's a manga, and for some reason, it's weekly shown in Junk also. Oh yeah. So, but thankfully, Dark Dark Tanjiro wins, and he inflicts a penalty game upon the operative that that, 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 that makes him think he's being hanged. Don't worry, it's not. He doesn't actually get hanged, but he thinks he's being hanged as part of his penalty game. If it's, and, thus, and thus, Dark Tan- Tanjiro hands back Kanao her star chips, and she's back in the tournament. And, and of course, you know, that leads to some Kan Kana moments, because, you know, yeah. However, in addi- additionally, shortly after this duel, Gyu randomly challenges Tanjiro to a duel, and we find, and we find out the reason why soon after. Wait, who is that? Did I hear someone, or... Was someone talking, or... Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what happened was... So, you all remember Giyu's older sister, Tsutako, right? From the... From, from his backstory? Yeah. yeah. So what happened was... His break from Luna. What happened was, she was... She was kidnapped by Muzan. And in order for Giyu to win her back, she he has to first defeat Tanjiro in a duel, duel in order to face Muzan, and then he has to win against Muzan. Dark, Dark Tanjiro takes up the challenge against, against Giyu and initially starts winning. But the problem is Giyu starts despairing over the thought of losing, so he, so he threatens, so he threatens to, jump off, to jump off the roof of the building, building they're standing on if he loses. Yeah. Again, very dark. Very, uh... <laughs> 
This actually happens. So Gyu obviously, you know, threatens to kill himself and stuff. But Dark Tanjiro decides to try to attack him anyway because he thinks he can't lose a duel. But but the thing is, Tanjiro intervenes, takes takes back control of his body, and cancels the attack, which allows Gyu to attack him and win the duel, allowing him to go on to face Muzan. The rest of the Hashira aren't happy with Gyu, and so they basically, they basically kind of expel him from the group and refuse to talk to him because Gyu couldn't tell them what was going on with his sister, otherwise his sister would have been killed. He was supposed to keep it a secret. You guys following so far? Yeah, yeah, I'm following. Yeah. What about you, Snack? Snack, are you there? Nope, she left. That's great. Oh. <laughs> She'll be back, though, I think. Alright, so yeah. So, so yeah, after after that, Tanjiro has his little self-reflection arc. He begins to wonder who, who he really is, who his other self really is, and all the, and all the other fun stuff. So basically, he's a normal teenager. Essentially. Yeah, he's basically like <laughs> Steven Universe and Steven Universe Future before he goes to therapy. Right? Oh no, I thought I honestly I thought he was just being a normal teenager because every teenager is like, who am I at some point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like it's a hard time in life, you know, especially when you're a demon slayer and you're already like in a full time job as a fifteen year old. A job that makes money for something we don't have, even though we're adults. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's true. Uh, well, keep so, going, keep going, keep going, Sparta. The one of the duels that helps Dark Tanjiro and Dark Tanjiro build their trust into trust with each other is a duel he has with Inosuke against against these two twin brothers who 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 have who have a lab a labyrinth duel, essentially. Radical, you're probably familiar with the whole labyrinth duel the, the Paradox Brothers had in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? One of us only tells the truth. One of us only speaks lies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so hmm. Isn't that this, the Paradox Brothers? It is, essentially, yeah. Except in this case, Dark Tanjiro inflicts penalty games upon both of them instead of just letting them go, because he's still kind of dark in that aspect. So Tanjiro, this isn't Tanjiro, just edgy tan Tanjiro. This is dark Tanjiro. Is this is demon or, you know, Yami, Tanjiro. Or, or Yami, Yami Tanjiro, if you want to be, you know, say in, say in Japanese, I guess. Who, who is actually Yorichi, but that's a spoiler for later on. I mean, I think we like could... Noirichi. I mean, I think we could, like, infer that. Yeah. Pretty easily. Mm hmm So after Tanjiro and Inosuke win went against the twin brothers, they they end they end up being part of the, of the of the sixteen finalists. Who among the finalists are them, Mitsuri, Kanao, Uzui, and Shinobu. Zenitsu didn't make it into the finals, unfortunately. Is he dead? No, he's not Zenitsu isn't dead. Oh. He's just a bitch. So during the finals, Tanjiro duels Inosuke and Kanao and wins against both of them. Shinobu, Shinobu duels Mitsuri and wins. Shinobu, Shinobu duels Kanao and loses. And Inosuke duels Uzui and wins, among others. The last, the, the last duel is between Tanjiro and Inosuke. What are the duels about? The, the card game duels, right? Yeah, they're, they're just regular card game duels. They're not really... So like the Yu-Gi-Oh! No trading card game duels, right? Yes. Okay. But following duels, king of duels. Yeah. Okay. And dur also during also during the finals, Tanjiro duels against against the only Muzan operative to make to make it into the finals, who is actually Daki, and inflicts a penalty game on upon her, which becomes which becomes relevant later on. The penalty game is is pretty horrible, but it leaves Daki alive, but just mentally scarred essentially. But before Ta before Tanjiro can duel Mu can, can duel Kaguya, who is the original creator of the tournament, Muzan enters the scene and challenges Giyu to his duel, his promised duel. And so before the final duel, Muzan and Giyu duel each other. 
and Giyu initially, initially initially is winning, but Mu but Muzan manages to gain the upper hand, and he ends and he and he ends up winning against Giyu. The, and, the, and the problem is, and the, and the problem is Muzan Muzan ends up killing Sutako anyway in front of him. No. And then traps Giyu's soul into a mystical box. Basically, if no, basically, he'll consume the box and kill Giyu within 40 hours if Tanjiro does not win the tournament. However, he's also planted bombs in Kage's house and, thre- and threatens to blow, to blow up what? the house and his family if, if, Kage, if Kage loses the duel. Oh my god. Oh, oh so who wins some who who wins? Someone will die. Uh, can I just say I'm imagining Sabito picking up the box with Giyu in it and being like, what's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> and thus we get the final duel. Kageya and and and, and, uh, and other and Dark Tanjiro. Uh-oh. Both, not as normal because as Muzan threatened. To kill Giyu if either side surrendered that surrendered that without fighting. Ultimately, Dark Tanjiro defeats Kage in the duel after a well fought battle between between friendly rivals, essentially. But thankfully, quick thinking from Obanai and Mitsuri, who immediately, who immediately went to Kage's house on the island, they managed to find all the bombs and defuse them before before Kage lost the duel. It's a good thing they aren't colorblind and can see the big bright red wire. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike Tsunami. So is Tsunami colorblind? Yes. Yeah, he got yeah, partially he... colorblind after he killed his mother. He's a demon. Ah. Uh, and so so <laughs> No wonder his morality is so great. Muzan begrudgingly I mean black is white. Enemy. So Muzan, exactly. so Muzan actually holds up his end of the bargain. He doesn't like take it back or anything. He actually holds up his end of the bargain re- reluctantly and frees Giyu, but, va- but vows to strike again before he disappears. I just imagine Muzan being like, okay, fine, you can have your boy back. He throws the box start running. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Shinobu and Giyu reconcile because they had a little fight after the whole Giyu versus Tanjiro duel. So they reconcile. And, and the whole group celebrates, but also mourns when Goku's loss. But back in Muzan's headquarters, Gyutaro co- comes to Muzan and wants to get revenge for Daki being, you know, kind of, you know, mentally scarred from the penalty game that she got. And uh, and Akaza also wants an, uh, also wants to face also wants to face Tanjiro because Tanjiro and actually holds some respect for him, essentially. He, wa- he he wants to go after Ta- Tanjiro and properly duel him, s- since they weren't able to duel during Duelist Kingdom, and that's where I've left it off so far. And uh, I'm trying I'm trying to type Battle City right now, but I can't figure out who should start Battle City though, or if I should throw like a filler arc in there or something. Hmm. I could do a virtual world arc. I hmm. could do virtual world arc was pretty cool. Hmm. The first one or the second one? You know, the first one with the first big five, and then the one with Noah is the second one. I think you're talking about I might the be second blending one. them together. The second uh, one, I think, is what he's referring mm-hmm. to. Because technically, the first virtual thing was like a mini arc. It wasn't like it didn't have like the whole ending and opening full season thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, or or we could do the, the dungeon dice monsters arc. That was a that small. Was a, that was a mini episode in one series season as well. Well, not the, the actual manga, monsters though. <laughs> yeah. And, and, do we want to jump into Battle City? Let's just do Battle City. I mean, I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. I'll, do, I'll combine the first virtual world with the dungeon dice monsters arc because dungeon dice monsters is an actual arc in the manga. It's a lot longer. Yeah, that's true. We are going off mm-hmm. the manga, so. But so, what do you yeah. have on that? Yeah, the anime rolled in that one, so. 
so it's kind of like the like manga storyline, but with like anime technology. So there's no dual. So it's it's kind of like manga storyline with, with some anime technology, essentially. Anime technology means that you can actually squeeze the boobs. <laughs> oh my god! Go to horny jail. I'm not the horny one here. I'm just saying what we all know is true. Mm -hmm. Anime technology means... Yeah. So, so after the events of Duelist Kingdom, the gang, the gang starts to, re to readjust back to school life. There's a couple school arc episodes here and there, yada, yada, yada. But behind, but behind the scenes, Ka 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 Kaguya... Ka Ka Kaguya start, starts building a virtual world, but the pro but the problem is, who do you think would, would be would be a good hacker character amongst like the the, the, amongst the upper, amongst oh, the upper, upper moons? That's yeah. Doma. Uh, mm. all right. I, got I feel like if we have to pick characters to be hackers, I feel like the two best are Enmu because he's associated with dreams, and Rui because he's associated with World Wide Web. I mean, they're both kind of dead, so. We can look at the lower moons. There's only there's only two lower moons and one X lower moon, which we actually know anything about. Yeah, Hy Hyro could be it. Hmm. He summons besides wolves. That, besides that, I need to kill Kanae. So. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I just Shana don't Bo see Doom as a hack. What about the former... He's a hack at life. Mm -hmm. What more do you want from him? <laughs> I mean, what about the former Lower Moon one? Because she technically hacked a house and made the house an extension of her own body. That was just mm -hmm. that was just Kill Guy then. Okay, that's fair. We have Nakime too. That's not like yeah. a unique BDA. We could have Nakime... Actually, yeah, um, that Akime gives me the Persona Four vibes of what was her name from Persona Four? Fuck. Uh, do you mean Persona Five with Futaba? No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Persona Five. Damn it. I'm, yeah, Persona Futaba, Persona Five. My mistake. And she like the mm. hacker thing. So yeah, we could have an Akime be the hacker, and it so, gives her an agency in beyond like, what we see imagine. in the manga. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Imagine Nakame in Futaba's bodysuit. Oh my god. Go to horny jail. Bonk. What are you talking about? I'm just giving you guys ideas. So what happens in the virtual is Kage was building a was building a virtual world for a new for a new game that his company was gonna make. But the problem is Doma and Nakime hacked into ha hacked into it while while, Ka while Kage was was running a test and trapped his body inside it without him being able to wake up. And so what happens is Tanjiro, Shinobu, Kanao, and Kanae are the ones are, 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 all, are all the ones who go who who go into the virtual world to rescue to rescue Kageya while the other while 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 the, while the rest of the gang is kind of busy with some other subplot or something. I don't really know yet. You could have the so, dice monsters thing happening on the side if you want. Wait, the dungeon dice monsters? Uh, yeah, now I'll have, that, I'll have that after the virtual world thing. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I want to say is it could be interesting to say that, you know, there's a hacker, but they can't really identify that, and that's Nakame. But while mm. Nakame is drawing their attention with the hack, she has Duma remotely go into the world to try and kill Kaguya in the virtual world so that he's left with the vegetable. Yeah, I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. So Nakime is a hacker. Doma's the one who went and trying to try and kill Kaguya. And so and, and so they and I'm going through the virtual world. And what happens is Do Doma's Doma's managed to corrupt several of the NPCs to fight it to fight against them and, and, and duel against them. And eventually Kana Kanae is take is taken by Doma and actually and actually for forced to duel him alone. And and, and the the rest, the rest of the gang walk. The rest of the gang walks in just just as Kanae loses and disappears. Shin Shinobu and Shinobu ends up as actually like 
like catching her as she falls and she and Kane fades away and disappears in her arms. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. And you just hear <laughs> pretty much. Game and so it happened. And so and so the four the four of them end up dueling Doma together and they end up winning. Yeah, get that bitch. But Do but Doma isn't dead. They just managed to expel him. And when they and, and, and they wake up thinking Ka Kane will wake up with them. But the problem is when when, Ka when Kane's pot opens and they shake her body, she's dead. What if we say she's not dead? She's just completely vegetative. Like she's brain dead. Nah, she, she's dead. She she's a hundred percent dead. But that's more traumatic if it's like Shinobu <laughs> keep her sister alive, like she's not dead. You know, she's still breathing and stuff, but it's like she's brain dead. She's never coming back. And maybe Shinobu constantly is just like, Well, maybe I can find her soul out there. Maybe I can get her soul back by challenging Duma to a shadow game. Like maybe I can do this. You know, maybe there's a way. She's just constantly holding on to this hope of saving her sister. Okay, okay, you know, so you know, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try that. Ka Kane is brain dead, and she, and Shinobu is, is constantly, is constantly trying to bring, to bring her back for the rest of the story. Because I mean, come on, that is so good and tragic, and it fits with her character of that just you know, boiling rage and determination and being willing to throw her life away. Mm -hmm. So so after that comes the Dungeon Dice Monsters arc. And we find and we and I, I, I decided who do you think would be would be a good Duke Duke Devlin among among the protagonists? I don't hmm. think Duke Devlin. Penguin. Sounds right, yeah, like a can, Tengen thing. Alright, yeah, we can we alright, we can do Uzui. Yeah. <laughs> so so what happens with Uzui? Is that is that his his father? Oh, he and his father he and his father developed developed a new game called Dungeon Dice Monsters together. And what happened was many years ago, Kaguya's father and Uzui's father once once participated in a shadow game together. And what happened was Uzui's father Uzui's father lost after he tried to basically sell Kaguya's father out and kill him. As a result, U Uz Uzui's father was 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 for was forced to age physically by like 30 years essentially good okay. kill that asshole age that motherfucker i hate uzui's dead i'm sorry yeah he's still alive so, i think in the manga at least so what happens is uzui ends up signing with kage anyway because because even after the even after the duel his fought Uzui's father pretend, pretended to try and you know reconcile with Kaguya, but that was one. That was all part of his plan to get revenge on him one day. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, Ka, 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 Uzui's father, U U U U Uzui's father decides that Ta Tanjiro and Uzui play an exhibition game of, dun of dungeon dice monsters together. But 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 what, ha but what happens is just as Uzui, just as Uzui is uh, is about to lose. His, fa his father steps in. His father steps in, and forces Tanjiro at gu at gunpoint to face him in a dungeon dice monster in a dungeon dice monsters duel, pretty much with the with I'm trying to wait. What, what was his uh, puzzle again? I forgot what was his puzzle. What was his puzzle's name? What was the puzzle's name again? Which puzzle? Uh, Tanjiro's puzzle. The Millennium Puzzle. Let's see here. So what did you name? No, what did you name? The, you... the it earrings. It was the earrings. Yeah, we named them the earrings or something. Yeah. So so Uzui's father forces Tanjiro to get to play to play in a game against him after he beats Uzui at Dungeon Dice Monsters at gunpoint at gunpoint, mind you, and he forces Tanjiro to, to put to put his Hanafuda earrings. As the bet, and and the thing is, Tanjiro, even without Dark Tanjiro helping him, still manages to defeat to defeat Uzui's father, and 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 in a rage, he and in a in in and in a rage, he set he sets fire to the room they're in and escapes. 
And when he tries to steal the Hanafuda, the Hanafuda earrings, Dark Tanjiro's spear, spirit es- es- essentially attacks him and, thre- and actually throws him across the room. Tanjiro manages to crawl through the smoke and just barely manages to rescue the earrings before, before, they, before they catch on fire. And, and Inosuke and Zenitsu end up, ha- end up having to rescue him from the fire before he dies. And, and so that's the first virtual world arc and the um, Dungeon Dice Monsters arc, essentially. Got any thoughts so far? I'm trying to think. Like, I mean, what you said Uzumi's dad is the main villain of this person, right? Yeah. So he gets redeemed. He gets redeemed. He doesn't Ew, get redemption a for Father just, Ten. Just, Okay, I guess. I guess. He gets I redeemed. Guess. He, re- he realizes he was wrong, and he reckons, and he truly reconciles with Kaguya and his son after this. And he, be- he actually becomes pretty helpful later on, too. Okay, I guess Dad Zui can have a little bit of redemption. None for Shitsugawa, though. Yeah, I yeah, fuck, say, his, fuck I his dad. I can't freaking believe, like... I forgot Duke Devlin's name. When he- <laughs> Remarkable character design. Yeah. Or as he's, or as he's known in Japanese and the manga, Ryuji Otogi, or just Otogi for short. Yeah. yeah sometimes, sometimes I forget in the, in the English version of the manga, they kept the Japanese character names. I think that's because they couldn't be, they were like, it's a manga. So who knows? You know, like it's yeah. not like it's not like an anime where kids are gonna watch it and not know anything. You know? Yeah. Like they could be lazy, so will, but so who knows? So I will, I will say in the first volume of the Yu Gi Oh manga's English release, they did contain translators' notes for like which character had dub names in the in the in the, in the anime version. So so I, so like when like when um Yugi said Jonochi for the first time, I said translators' note called Joey Wheeler in the an- in the TV version, or Anzu called. Call, called Taya Gardner in the TV version, essentially. And I believe they kept these notes for the first couple of volumes, and they just said, "Fuck it, you know, you know where they are by this point." Mm. And thus, we go to Battle City. Battle City is going to be a very long arc, and it's going to it's going to be the arc where where, where they find out that. The Dark Tanjiro is actually Yorichi, because after the duel, after Dungeon Dice Monsters duel, Tanjiro and, T- and Dark Tanjiro have a have a have a very long conversation with each other, and Dark Tanjiro reveals that he has no idea who he is, where he's, where he's from, or what his purpose is. The only thing he rem- remembers is waking up in Tanjiro's body, assuming his assuming that he was Tanjiro himself, and just acting like that essentially. It isn't until this point that the two of them essentially realize that they're both completely separate people occupying the same body. And Tanjiro prom- promises Dark Tanjiro that even if they never find his memories, he can still he can still live in his body rent free. That sounds wrong. I shouldn't have phrased it that way. <laughs> but essentially, oh, it's okay. Listen, if listen. you make a mistake and it may it's semi like un- not understandable. Don't say you made a mistake, because then people will now think to look for the mistake. Yeah. And so it was like, Tanjiro's like, don't listen, other me, don't worry. Even if we can't find your memories, we'll, we'll make new ones. I swear. Like that, essentially. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, puzzle, the puzzle shipping people are probably going crazy right now. For those who don't know, puzzle shipping... P- puzzle shipping is, is a ship between Yugi and and Yugi and Atem. So what the fuck? What? Yeah, that's, that's a He's really a smart fucking ship. child. Snacked. 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 Rule thirty four version S. Oh my god. I mean, to be fair, Atem, Atem was the same age as Yugi when he became Pharaoh and then died back then. So again, though, as I've been saying, don't be be horrified of what it is, but the fact that it exists, don't be horrified, because rule ver, version S of Rule 34 is a bitch. Yeah. 
so so, so a lot of people seem to forget that like like Yami Yugi is the exact same age as Yugi essentially. He became Pharaoh at like fifteen or sixteen. It's just that he looks taller and has a deeper voice. And it's a lot it's a lot more pronounced in the anime and, and in the later versions of the manga. And he's supposed to speak version? Egyptian, not Japanese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I don't know how they got, Egyptian. I don't know how they got away with that, but in all honesty, why is he speaking in ancient Egyptian? <laughs> also, I mean, like they are wasn't, sharing wasn't minds. Pan? So, like, wasn't he like Pan at one point? And well, people well, he, were like, and well, people were Pan. like, yeah. He was Tan when he was occupying his original body from ancient Egypt. Yeah, so like I, I saw I saw something online that was like people were calling it like black atem, which was really weird because atem is Egyptian and he's supposed and he, to be tan. And, and Egy Egyptians aren't Egyptians aren't black, especially in the area he, yeah. he he's from. Egyptians. Well, it's, go, it's for the, go for the Nubian. Because, go for the Nubian pharaohs if you want black. Egyptians. Oh, it's actually yeah. complicated because Egypt was actually a pretty racially diverse like kingdom. Oh, yeah. But mm -hmm. I'm saying that like this is not a, an altered version of Atem. This is just Atem. Yeah, it's, it's, he's it's, just it's, tan. Like he's yeah. he's just tan. Like this is not like someone edited. He he's just tan because he's Egyptian. It was not an attempt <laughs> to do something with the design. <laughs> yeah, there was there was no attempt. He, he's just tan. No, okay. So the thing was like some fan artists made fan art of the canon attempt, and people thought this was a fan interpretation, but it's actually canon. Like he's mm -hmm. he's just tan. Like yeah, it's that's essentially what people it's in the desert are. I mean, at least, soul. at least Kazuki Takahashi did like did justice to the fact that he's Egyptian in his own body. All right, mm -hmm. let's be. Let my, I, I yeah. can appreciate that. That at least he tried yeah. to be yeah, somewhat that's... accurate with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in in Yugi's body, he's Asian, but in his original body, he's Egyptian. And they still have the same design, well, even though he's mm -hmm. in Egypt. <laughs> Especially in the in the original. In the earlier versions of the manga, there was barely any height difference between between Yugi and Atem. There's like maybe like an inch or two or something. But in the anime and in the later versions of the manga, the height difference can became a lot like a lot bigger essentially. Essentially, yeah. So did the but somehow the clothes also adjusted. Yeah. It's magic though. Mm hmm Oh, but who is wait, who is the Joey Wheeler of your story, by the way? It's kind, uh, it's it's kind of a Nosuke kind of. Wait, so that, that means so then that means Nosuke is the strongest character in Demon in your in your story then. Oh yeah, he can he can kick people's asses. No, but you know that Joey is considered the strongest character by Kazuki Takahashi, right? Yeah. He's what? No, it's simple. Yeah. It's for one reason. It's for some reason. It's because Joey solves his problems without using money or magic, like Kaiba. And Yugi, so that's why. Okay, fair. So that's why he says. Intelligence. Yeah. Is... That's why he's Kazuhaki Takashi says Joey is the strongest character. That is the only reason mm -hmm. why. Well, and it makes the, sense. The thing is, I mean, the thing about it, look how far think how far Jinochi got in Battle City. He didn't need any magic, any magic powers, or or some or some past ancient Egypt bullshit. He had his himself and his deck, and he almost won against Dark Merrick. But then you know, plot kicked in, and he and he had to lose. So you know, Joey's a tough guy because in his dubbed voice, he's pretty much got like that New York or Boston accent. No, Brooklyn accent. It's a Brooklyn accent. Brooklyn. It's not. It's not yeah. a Boston accent. Boston accent would be much worse. That's why I said New York or Brooklyn because I couldn't remember which. You said Boston. I said New York or Boston. Yeah, it's been like a, a long time. Yeah. But yeah, uh, he has the kind of accent where you know he will beat the shit. Mm -hmm. He's clearly the strongest person. <laughs> and, the reason, and, and the reason Joey has that is because in the original Japanese version, he has a very, like, very impol like, impolite and very informal to tone of speaking. He uses very informal informal words in his sentences. So when four kids brought it over, they brought, brought it over. They knew what they actually in this case they actually knew what they were doing and they and they actually correctly correctly interpreted it as as that kind of accent actually. 
It's like when they adapted Naruto to the dub. They gave Gamakichi the New York accent because his dad and the Japanese had the Hiroshima gangster accent. Yeah. And similarly, the reason why Bakura has a British accent is because in the Japanese version, Bak- Bakura in both Bakura, like, or at least, you know, the, the good Bakura has a very, very, very polite, to- polite tone of voice. I thought like, he was like half, his... I thought he was half Fu, wasn't he? Or, or he went to England or something. I could have sworn he did. Uh, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that his speaking, his way of speaking in Japanese was, was, was like super polite, even for like Jap- like. Oh, right oh yeah, Japanese. no, I guess, hold on, I'm going to look this up, but I could have sworn the reason was because he was actually that way. Well, give me a second. And, and and it's also the reason why in like the the infamous Singapore dub of Yu Gi Oh, Bakura was Bakura was given a was given a southern accent. Wait, was, there's a <laughs> <laughs> yes, there there is an uncut oh. Singapore English dub of Yu Gi Oh. So he speaks like a hillbilly then. No, well, he has a very more sophisticated southern accent. You know, southern hospitality, that kind of stuff. You know, southern hospitality, southern politeness. That's that's what that's what the O deck Singapore dub was going for. If I had to guess, it'd be like, oh hey, oh, hey Taya, hey, have you all seen Yugi around anywhere? Like that, essentially. Oh. Uh, the infamous Singaporean dub. Did they keep the violent parts of the anime? I have to wonder. Yes, it was completely it was completely uncut. The only thing they changed were the names, and there was actually a good reason, for, and that's actually a reason for that. That takes a little long to explain, but I'll get into it anyway because we have time. I mean, Asian Asian dubs in general, like, um, they they don't care about gore. Like, I can mm. I can name so many Chinese animated shows that have explicit gore that are meant for children. So one thing I noticed is that. Kids watch Kimetsu no Yaiba Mugen Train in theaters? Easy. Yeah. Comes to the United States, rated R. So there is a tag log of Yu-Gi-Oh, but, they, but that also uses the names of Taya, Joey, and Tristan. But the thing is, the tag log dub and the Singapore English dub both came out before the four kids dubbed it by, by a couple months. And there's a reason they use those names. You see, my theory is that those names weren't created by four kids at all. They were created by the Japanese distributors as a way to help market the anime to international distributors and dubbers, essentially. Because Japanese companies used used to actually do this. They used to give guidelines for, you know, if you're going to localize the anime and change the names to make it sound less foreign, here are some name ideas, essentially. Uh, Okay. And and there are... What were you saying? So is if that's true, like back in the day, like nowadays they don't really do it that much, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, because obviously they, they kind of expect that the dub isn't gonna be changed that much at all anymore. I mean, when you have weird English in Japan, I think the people who are doing the anime the anime like big shops and studios, they don't really care. Yeah. It just shows that they're very they very unaware. Mm-hmm. I have to wonder believe... though. What would a, I have to wonder though? What would a Japanese mangaka who actually knows English think of the English dubs? They would probably abhor it more or less. Well, I, I feel like they wouldn't abhor the voice acting too much. I think they more abhor the changes made if it was like a localized dub, like Four Kids did. Yeah, Four Kids. Yeah. Oh my god. And and you the could other... get better dubs if you hired Four Kids. Yeah, you probably could. It wasn't made yeah. for kids, unfortunately. Because children are genuine in their voice acting, mm-hmm. and not like emotional. So, I don't mean to get off of Yu Gi Oh, but there's another anime that I, that I know for a fact is more, is more proof of this. And the other anime is, you know, I mentioned it before, Tokyo Mew Mew. And <laughs> like, Tokyo Mew Mew, <laughs> my childhood. And the reason I bring that up is because before Four Kids got got their hands on it, there was an Italian dub made that was also completely uncut and completely unedited, called Mew Mew Amike Vinc- Vincenti. You know, Mew Mew Victoria's Friends, essentially. But the thing is, it ret- it had names that Four Kids used later on, like Mark for like Mark for Aoyama, 
and also had names that four kids were going to, were, were going to use, but then changed changed during the dubbing process, like like Ryan for Rio, and Kyle for Kate, and Kyle for Keiichiro, which later became Wesley and Elliot. In fact, early early promo early promos from four kids actually call them Ryan and Kyle instead of like instead of Elliot and Wesley. Which is which is why me and this other YouTuber named Hika named Hika Yagami came up with a theory that Tokyo Mimu's Japanese distributors came up with these names as a way to market the show to international markets, essentially. And it wasn't entirely for kids for kids' decision to, to come up with some of these names in their anime. Hmm, okay. Yeah, so yeah, the world of anime, the business world of anime is very complicated. Remember, kids, <laughs> anime is actually not just for kids. It is run yes. by adults, which means it has adult problems behind the scenes. No, no, no. It's not adult animation because that always looks like shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, Invincible is pretty good, and yeah. the Samurai Jack um, thing, well, and Love, Death, and Robots came up with a pretty good animated short. Um, and Has Been Hotel. It, it's actually oh, yeah. animated Hotel really well. Has Been Hotel is an well. indie project. Um, Samurai Jack was... Gennady uh, Tartakovsky cannot be compared to his contemporaries. Down. Okay, but Primal. Yeah. Primal. Primal's fucking looks amazing. But what I'm think saying is think. refers to a different thing. And Invincible is based on a comic book. Okay, so fair. another topic all that's close once again closer to anime. Everything you mentioned that I know of is honestly closer to anime than what is recognized as adult animation. Adult animation is things like that big face, whatever that was, and things like that. Uh okay. Uh what about um Bojack? Bojack Horseman? Okay, we're getting off. That will be adult Let's get back animation. to Yu-Gi-Oh, please. Yeah. Now I have to put a tangent alert, a video, a tangent alert All in right. the video. Tangent alert. <laughs> Just the alarm sound, and then it'll be a frequent yeah. thing in our the podcast. I feel. The last part of the tangent I want to go on is, I'm, I don't, you don't have to comment on this anymore, but you can actually look look up a test dub Funimation made of One Piece before four kids got it got it the first time. Yeah, Funimation. Because see, Funimation was one of several companies that actually put into put into dub One Piece way back in the day, and their test dub sounds way different from the from the current dub they have of it now. Oh, you guys want to see a good dub of One Piece? Oh God, here we go. <laughs> no, oh my God. no, I'm scared. No, another time. Which one is it? Okay, fine. Just link it in the general channel, DCC. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll link the Funimation test up in the general channel too. But anyway, so I I, I haven't really gotten much more of the Yu Gi Oh AU because I've been kind of busy. As have we all been. Yeah, but um, what do we, what do you guys think of it so far? I think you've thought this out very well, and I'm honestly impressed. Mm -hmm. I really love your passion for Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, Thank you. Yu Gi Oh is pretty good. Uh, I love Nug. <laughs> So and I learned a lot, actually, that I didn't watch in the anime. Um, mm -hmm. Well, number one, most animes don't adapt everything unless you're unless it's yeah. different, more or less. Yeah. I mean, nowadays is is a bit better. I've noticed nowadays it's a bit better with, with adaptations. They may add a filler, but they won't delete anything from the manga, unlike in unlike in the past. I think it's because we finally got that '90s conservative mentality out of our brains. And plus, I think the other reason is like people started realizing you don't, you know, you don't have to have a constantly airing anime week week after week after week for it to be to, for it to be successful. I mean, imagine if Demon Slayer just didn't stop at twenty six episodes and just kept on going week after week after week after week. It would run. It would have issues with filler at some point, right? Well, okay, but f okay, but. I'm going to admit, I don't see a problem with filler as long as it's, like, not bad filler. Like, yeah, honestly, you could just, you could just give them some more missions and, like, you know, it would, mm -hmm. it would work. Like, Demon Slayer is one of those rare series where filler would actually work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I, mean, I, which I think more filler would actually improve the series. And you I know, mean, Wami also has, filler? like, has time on their hands anyway. So they could make besides, filler. Well, 
I mean, we were explicitly given blocks of like time skips, like the full four months later time skip in between Mugen Train and the, and the Red Light District. What happened in those four months? We should know. Exactly. They're going to pull they're a Naruto. Naruto. Listen, what they're going to do is... Kind of on that note. They're going to pull a Naruto and then just do it all at the end. It'd be a flashbacks. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is, um, almost to Sparta's point, uh, some of that time that we don't see does appear in light novels and in the... Uh, was it called the uh, uh, guidance? There is yeah, that's true. Yeah, they could adapt that as. Um, mm -hmm. Bro, if they adapt single wing butterfly, I will fucking cry. Like cry of happiness or cry of sadness. I I will cry of sadness. Like no, that story hurt. Like and the Genya story. If they adapt the Genya and Sanemi story too, I will also cry. Like those two hurt me the most. Like I uh, the Genya just... the Genya scene when they animated is just gonna be memed. I feel. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh it's like like think Mark think. The game no, 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 the... no you can't control internet trolls. Eventually, when the anime adapts the Genya scenes, they're gonna be memed into oblivion. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, will, I mean, I will say one one of my favorite moments in all Yu-Gi-Oh was from a filler arc, actually. Yeah, Which one of my favorite. Uh, the moment where uh, Atem lost to Raphael. Oh yeah. And, and also the moment, and also the moment where where, where, where Atem kicked Weevil's ass at Berserker's soul for being a little bitch. Yeah. I remember. That's when we finally As see always. Raw at him, more or less. Yeah. yeah I, I will say, the English dub was actually was actually more brutal than the Japanese version, even, even though they cut out they cut out one of the attacks to make it less brutal. Uh, Atem's dialogue makes it more brutal in the Japanese version, in the English version. Because in the Japanese version, he just keeps rep repeating, draw a monster card, because he's losing his mind, essentially. He knows he's not keeping track. But in the English version, he knows exactly what he's doing. Because he, he says, like, this just isn't your day. Oh, well, it's another monster card like that. Like, he knows exactly what he's doing. And he, and he loves the fact that he's torturing Weevil, essentially. I just love when four kids accidentally make things worse in their attempt to make things better. They also implied that Weevil died because they left out yeah. that part of the dub. Which is ironic mm -hmm. because they say in the, in the, sub, in the Japanese, he, they made sure that they knew he didn't die. Yeah. You went to the Shadow Realm. I, I, I also, also you were sent to a hospital. Four, one other thing that four kids accident a, accidentally did actually made things worse it was in Battle City during during Americ's flashbacks. So in the original version, the markings on, the markings on his back were, were made were, were scars made of the knife. But four kids tried to make it better. By saying, "Oh, it's it's just a tattoo. Those aren't scars of the knife. It's a convict tattoo." <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing: with to achieve that level, to ch to achieve that level of, of like of detail with with rudimentary tattooing skills would have been extremely fucking painful. Even worse than getting carved than getting carved with a knife. Essentially, hey, no Parabo could do it. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, that I mean. Technically, there was like they did have like TVs and stuff at that point, so I don't know if it was that primitive, more or less. Well, well, well keep in mind, well, keep in mind, Merrick's family lived underground for like for like three thousand, like five thousand or three thousand years, depending on which no, version No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They got out from time to time. Remember, like oh, yeah, otherwise, Ishizu wouldn't Ishizu wouldn't know about things while they went up to the front to the surface, like Merrick. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. They probably had certain things, more or less, in knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say that, like, like honestly, Merrick's father was an asshole, but his fate in all three in all three versions was, like, still just, what the fuck? Pretty much. In, so in the Forkis version, you know, he gets banished to the Shadow Realm, all that fun stuff. In the Japanese version of the anime, he gets stabbed to death. That's, that's still a toned down version of what happens to him in the manga. What happens to him in the manga is that Dark Merrick pins him, pins him against the wall with his back facing towards him. He then, proceed, he, then proceeds to he then proceeds to carve the same pattern on his back onto his father's back 
and then stabs him to death and throw death and then and then throws the car the carved off skin onto his corpse. Yep, yeah, just another the, day in the Pharaoh's tomb. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but in so, any yeah, so event, even the, who would be yeah. this? But in any event, who would be the sad sap to be Candid, Bandit Keith in your AU by any chance? Uh, Bandit Keith, I never, never really thought of that. The anti-American never... propaganda of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never really thought who the oh, my. Keith character would be. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you do realize yeah. that in the manga, you do realize in the manga, Pegasus forces Bandit Keith to execute himself with a gun from his hand, right? Yeah, I know that. Nice. Yep. So yeah, basically, Pegasus turned his hand yeah. into a gun. Yep. He does come back in Yu Gi Oh R though, which is like a spinoff manga. Um, Keyword on spinoff, not the candy. Yeah. yeah. So, just a tangential thought I had earlier that I wanted to ask you guys. If All right. your AUs were adapted into an anime and they had to do a filler arc, what do you think your filler arcs or filler episodes would be like? Mm. Oh, for mine? Okay, so uh, I have a lot of ideas because I have a lot of characters. Um, probably mm, filler beach episode. Absolutely. Hmm. Probably in like the modern AU, like modern AU beach episode. For Hunter from America, if 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 I had a filler arc, it would probably take place in like the month time skip between chapters fifty one and fifty two. It would probably be beach with just like a mission or two that the gang goes on, essentially. <laughs> yeah, I'm still thinking on that one. For me, you know, I could have like the Omi Omi Spa Day, but that's actually too important to make a uh, filler episode or arc. But I could definitely do a beach episode. And oh even my god! Idea. Okay, so um, everyone goes to the hot springs, and then demons ambush them at night, but <laughs> naked. Stop getting golden Kamui vibes. All right. Two notes for you. One, if the demons are careful, they might not even know they're demons. They might just hang out with them. Two, <laughs> do attack. Demons are still going to get fucked up. All those slayers are bad asses. My slayers are OP. She's just, yeah, she's just, like, she's uh, just getting golden commonly hot spring vibes in her brain. It's okay. She's just but going like, to holy jail. Yeah. I want to see Sanemi say... Oh my god, we're all in the dark with our dicks out, too. Yeah, see, the Golden Comedy has infected her brain. That's what I'm telling you. Oh That's boy. the whole reason she asked. Also, he made um, Jima shirtless. Yee. But yeah, another thing I could do for Filler Arc would be during where um, Nezuko is in the, uh, let's just say, hotel, um, and everyone's looking for her. I can do have that as a filler rock where people are actually looking for her. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow snacks. I mean, you, you're the one sending, sending DCC to horny jail earlier. Now look at you. Okay, fine. Okay, but actual filler. She was just projecting. Um, I. We all know her Fujo I mean, mind wants this. I d okay, I am not a Fujo. Okay, I don't fetishize gay <laughs> relationships. I just think these two people could get together, and it would be pretty good. But honestly, um, not because they're both guys, but because I see them as compatible. Um, anyways. Uh, Fetishizing, uh, basically, yes. <sighs> oh my god. It's not that. <laughs> I can't, okay, I can <laughs> Okay, um, but... I mean, I have a lot of, like, slice of life stuff already in the main plot. I don't think I need more filler, which is, like, the reason, like, I decided to add all that padding is because I thought, like, you know, f filler humanizes characters. It can humanize characters very well. So all that is in the main plot, so I don't, I don't think my story needs more filler. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, moving back to the episode, because we only have a few minutes left. Yo, know, Sparta, quick question. Who would be the yeah. Zork Necrophades of your thing? 
Honestly, honestly, I was thinking of changing some of the plot of Yu-Gi-Oh up a little bit because, like, the ancient Egypt part wouldn't, wouldn't be compatible with it. Okay. Honestly, I, 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 I think Muzan would be a cop would be an amalgamation of like Bakura and Zork essentially. Hmm. All right. So he's replacing him then. All right. Yeah. Or you could just make the doctor the Zork Necrophades, and Muzan is just the pawn this whole time. True. I could do that. Eh, but who knows? We'll see what happens on that. But I mean, either way, Muzan's still the big bad in the story. Oh, yeah. You know, I just realized I haven't introduced Tameo and Yushiro yet. I could introduce them in Battle City. Hmm. Yushiro is that guy who has, like, the siblings and can mind read people, or just pretending to mind read. Oh, Roba, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then who is Tamayo? That's the question. I can't really. I mean, my. I suppose. I mean, she. I mean, she could be my. Yeah. But then, would that mean that Joey? Who would that mean? The Joey of the group is simping for her. Oh yeah, I can't, I can't have Inosuke <laughs> simping simping from simping for Tamayo. <laughs> oh, I would get jealous. <laughs> yeah. See who else? So then, who else would be? I mean, who knows? Yeah, that's not that's, that's for another episode. Who is Zenitsu again? I forget. Uh, Z- Zenitsu is kind. Zenitsu is kind of like Tristan, but a bit more active, I guess. Hmm. Well, I mean, in the manga, Tristan does get rejected, so that simping part is there. Yeah. The bad luck with girls is there, definitely. Oh yeah. Let's see. Okay. So, okay, in regards, so, but in regards to Yu-Gi-Oh, I would say, who is Shadi in your AU? Or do you not have an equivalent? I, 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 don't, really, I, don't, think, I don't think I really have an equivalent to Shadi. So you don't have that rooftop game where Taya is about to fall to her death? Oh, I, I, I don't think I have that, no. Uh-huh. I mean, I could, inc- I could incorporate it into like a, a second school arc, maybe as filler or something, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, it just depends. I'm just asking. Just more or less. Yeah. And then Bandit Keith. I mean, there's a lot of characters in Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, but then again, it depends on the... I think it's more important. I think it'd be more... Like... It'd be more... Worthwhile. Easy. Yeah, I'll just say easy to do the themes and arcs as opposed to characters. Yeah. At least for Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Although that I will never forget that you did say Inosuke is by default in Yu-Gi-Oh! by his role equivalent, the strongest character in all of Demon Slayer. Inosuke achieves his dream in Yu-Gi-Oh! as far as Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Inosuke... Inosuke has the potential to be the strongest character in AMY too. I mean, I get no, yeah, but he doesn't ever. We don't ever. He doesn't get there, more or less. You know what I mean? Fair. So in this AU, he <laughs> like does the story get there. of KMY is much smaller than the story of Yu-Gi-Oh. KMY was restricted to Japan. Yu-Gi-Oh went out to places. Yep. Yeah, like it went out to and Japan, it went to America, America and Egypt. Really. What did you say, DCC? It also doesn't focus on the character development as much, I feel like. I feel like a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! is very character-oriented, whereas oh, yeah. yep. KMY does have a lot of character focus, but is main, like has a main specific plot that is situational rather than character. Yeah. It's because Wani wanted a quick story as opposed to a longer one. But hey, that's yeah. their choice. Yep. But in any event, I think that about wraps up our Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. with a question mark at part two episode. Because we've gone on too many yeah, tangents say, in the middle yeah, of this. I feel like Demon <laughs> like could have worked either way. Character driven or situational driven. Either way, it would have been great. Really, any story can work that way. It's a matter of the writer. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there. I wanted more character driven more than, than anything, but that would have made it longer. Yeah. Yeah. I but also it, tend to a character driven story. Yeah, but in any event, 
If I if that's a spider eyes up, so any comments DCC on the Yu Gi Oh parts of this episode? Pretty good, no comments. So one comment and then somebody saying that wasn't a comment. Okay, gets next. Right. Mm. Um. Mm. Yu Gi Oh is well, not. Well, I learned comments. a lot. Yes. I, no, I'm not gonna. I learned <laughs> a lot, so. I gotta appreciate Sparta for that. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. my thing is, good to see some adaptations from the manga, considering I didn't think anyone else read it, to be fair. Because everyone just fit this with the anime. But it's nice to see that someone actually does know the manga as well. Yep. Any final words, Sparta? Uh, oh, well, all I'll say is I'll be I'll be more prepared with, with more with more arcs and stuff when part if part three comes around. Sparta, you're already more prepared than all of us. Like you actually wrote up a script and everything. Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but in any event, thank you all for joining our Yu-Gi-Oh with the question mark part three podcast. Part two, sorry, fuck. Part, part two, two podcast. Part two. Yeah. Part two, car test. And thanks for sticking around and join us for our next episode when we upload it. So until then, later. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.